podcast and welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another day of bookmas so today's video is going to be my wrap up slash recent reads because i haven't done a wrap up in a couple months this will be a wrap up for september october and november if you like this video make sure to subscribe and give it a big thumbs up both those mean the absolute world to me and let's go into all the books that i've read recently there is a chunk of these that I don't have with me. I didn't bring them with me when I moved because I didn't bring 99% of the books that I've read with me. I mostly just brought what was on my TBR. In September, I only read a couple books before I left for my trip. The first book that I read in September was It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Everyone's heard of this book by now. It's probably one of the most famous books current times following lily our main character when she's younger and the relationship slash love that she had in high school and the relationship that she has as a grown-up and how those worlds collide it is a hard-hitting contemporary romance i really enjoyed it so much so that i gave it five stars but i'm not like it's not going to be like one of my favorite books ever, but I still really enjoyed it and I thought it was really important to tell stories like this. I can also see flaws in it, so there's that. It's not like it's some perfect book, but I really enjoyed it and gave it five stars. So if you think you will enjoy it, definitely check it out. If you have certain triggers, I would say look those up. Then next I read Nothing More to Tell by Karen M. McManus. This was one of my most anticipated releases for the year. This year I don't know why, I just didn't pay attention too much to releases or there was only a few that really stuck out to me and this was one of them. This follows Bryn who she had been at this school and her favorite teacher had been murdered. After that, her family moved due to one of her parents getting a job somewhere else. And then flash forward four years and she is moving back to this town, going back to this high school. She gets an internship at a, a true crime show being an intern. And that reinvigorates her interest in this murder of her teacher because no one ever solved it. She is sure that the three kids who found the teacher's body no more than they're te than they are telling, especially her ex best friend Trip. As she looks into this case, a bunch of secrets come out and the drama unfolds. I liked this one. I gave it four stars. It's a good YA mystery. I liked this one better than I liked Karen M. McManus's last book, so I was happy that this one was better. Now let's grab the big pile of books that I read in October. Oh, it's absolutely nothing. <laughs> that was so stupid, but yeah, I didn't read a single thing in October. I was on my trip and I did read like a, maybe 50 pages of a book on Kindle and then I listened to maybe an hour of an audiobook, but that was literally it. I never finished the Kindle book, but I did finish the audiobook later, so you will see that. I never read anything in October, so we'll just move on to November. I did not have high hopes for November with reading because I did not get into my reading, into my TBR until about halfway through the month. I was not expecting to get my tbr done read very much but it ended up being the best reading month i've had ever quantity wise quantity wise so these books most of them actually all of them except for one i think are featured in two vlogs that will be coming out this month one that's my next upload and one that's hopefully not long after that. It's just gonna take a long time to edit. So um, I'm not gonna like talk super in depth, but I'm gonna talk about these books. But just know I talk more in depth about my feelings about them in those vlogs. So definitely check them out when they come out. Turn on the post notification bell so you don't miss them. The first book that I read in November was It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. The second book 
in this little duology. It came out in October and I was excited to get to it because I didn't want to be spoiled for it. Um, and I thought lots of people will be talking about it, but I really haven't heard people talking about it that much. And right when it ends with us ends, it pretty much picks up right from there. It continues to follow Lily, her life and the relationships, platonic and romantic after the aftermath of the first book. I gave this book three stars. Hear me out. It was kind of boring, and which I know maybe sounds rude, but it was just like there wasn't really anything that happened. I don't know that it was necessary, but I, I didn't hate it. It was fine. It was definitely like fine. And there were some really cute moments in there that I really enjoyed. But overall, it was just okay. After finishing It Ends With Us, I was like, oh yeah, I'm kind of actually excited for the second one. But then I read it and I'm like, uh, this was not needed. They could have just put like a chapter in at the end of It Ends With Us. And that would have been fine because literally nothing really happened. So it was kind of disappointing, but not that disappointing. The next book that I read was November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I gave this one three stars too. I was enjoying this. This one follows Fallon and Ben. They meet one day, November 9, and that's our last day in LA. And they spend the day to together and then they promise that they will meet up every November 9th for like five years or something. And then we just follow each November 9th. We catch up with their lives from the past year and that just the drama of it all. Not that I really hated it ever. I will say I was shocked by the plot twist because I didn't know a plot twist was coming. Like I just didn't even think about it and I'm usually pretty good at figuring out plot twist but I just like wasn't even looking for it and so I was like pretty shocked by the plot twist but then it just <sighs> that plot twist ruined this book for me well it could have not but it did I can't really say why but I think this could have been a plot twist that happened and been okay like okay like I wouldn't have been mad or like hated it and then it just continued to get worse and worse and worse and it just made me really disappointed with the book it was not romantic for me it was not any of that so it just brought it down for me which was disappointing because i was enjoying it um and then i just ended up hating one of the characters um because of all of the plot twists and all of that business luckily for me the month looked like it was turning around because next i read the hawthorne legacy by jennifer and lynn barnes and this is the second book in the inheritance games trilogy and i gave this book five stars i really really enjoyed this i enjoyed the inheritance games but this one i enjoyed even more in the inheritance games we are following avery grams when she is just living her regular day to go to life and she finds out she is inheriting billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars and just stuff from this billionaire that she had never met tobias hawthorne um no one knows why she's getting this inheritance and his family is so mad about it so they're trying to find out why she's getting this inheritance she is met with the, his four grandsons and they're all trying to figure out the puzzle of why she got the inheritance because their grandpa is known for puzzles, riddles, and all that kind of stuff. So this one just follows off where this first one ends and we see the puzzle continue. And I really, really enjoyed this. It was super fast paced. I read this very, very quickly. For this one, it just kept going up. I really, really enjoyed it and I'm really excited for the third book. But I'm gonna have to wait because I have the first two in a paperback and the third one's only out in hardcover right now. So I'm gonna have to wait until that comes out in paperback, probably like, I think it's in the summer next year. So, but I really enjoyed this. So it was a very good turn of events that this one was so good. Then I listened to The Night Shift by Alex Finlay. This was the audiobook that I had started when I was on my trip, but only read like an hour of it. 
and I really wanted to finish this one so I decided to pick it up and finish it. This one follows a bunch of different perspectives but there is had been a murder in the 90s at a blockbuster. A bunch of people died, like four or five people died and one survived and then flash forward like 15 years later there is a very similar murder at a ice cream I think it's an ice cream shop something like that and they're trying to see if they're connected because the first one was never technically solved no one went to jail for them we're following like an FBI agent someone who was close to a suspect the one survivor of the blockbuster murders I can't remember if, remember if there's somewhere else, someone else but there's at least three perspectives I quite enjoyed this it wasn't like the most fantastic mystery that I've ever read but I think it was solid. If it sounds interesting to you, I would recommend. I liked the audiobook. There was different narrators, so that was fun. I gave it four stars. It could maybe lean to a 3.5, but it'd be like the higher of a three, so I just gave it a four. Then I picked up They'll Never Catch Us by Jessica Goodman. This is a YA mystery following two sisters who are really good at cross country running. That is kind of their whole entire lives. One more so than the other. She's pretty intense about it. But they live in this town where there was four unsolved murders. I think it's four. Four unsolved murders of previous cross country runners years before. And then someone that they run with ends up going missing so they're wondering if the murderer is back and what the deal with that is and trying to find out who did it unfortunately this one was a three stars as well this just focused way too much on running for me like it, the mystery didn't even start until 100 pages in and even after it started it wasn't like that big of a part of it it just felt like it was a bad part of the story and the main part of the story was the running and i just don't care about running you will not catch me running so i don't really want to read about it so it was still decent and the ending was just like not it didn't really make up for anything so i loved a book from this author earlier this year now this one's kind of a miss it's not awful but forgettable the next book that i finished was heartstopper volume one this is the first time that i have read this graphic novel and i really really enjoyed it if you don't know this follows nick and charlie as their friendship blossoms and possibly blossoms into more than just a friendship um it's a really cute graphic novel i decided to give it a four star just because it just didn't feel like five stars it felt kind of like a 4.5 just because not super a lot happens in it which is fine i just i just needed a little bit more of something something was missing but i really enjoyed it and i am hopefully gonna get the rest of the volumes very soon and i will continue it asap super cute would recommend definitely worth the hype then i read carnival by stephanie garber this one has been calling my name lately and so i'm so glad that i got to it this one follows two sisters who have been invited to carnival which is this magical carnival type of thing that at each one there is a mystery that needs to be solved and you get if you've solved the mystery with all the riddles and all the clues that you get then you get a reward and at this one you get a wish these sisters have been wanting to go to carnival forever and they finally are and it is just this very magical place craziness happening the whole time i really enjoyed it though and i'm glad i finally picked it up i just kept being really drawn to it because i had seen hannah's recent reads read this trilogy recently and she really enjoyed it and i was like you know what it feels like the right time to pick this up and it was i ended up giving this four stars it was really solid and i'm definitely going to continue the series asap i think it was super 
good, super cute. There's a little bit of a romance in here as well. At this carnival, the mystery actually includes the two sisters, but the one sister needs to get home before carnival even ends because she is planning to get married and she is engaged and she has a wedding before carnival ends, so she needs to get back home before then, but you know, craziness ensues. So yeah, if you've been thinking about picking this up, I would totally recommend it. I really wanted to get to this book before the end of the year. And then I made my December TBR, which you already would have seen, but I wasn't able to get it on there. And so I decided to try and read this in November, which I did. And that is This Might Hurt by Stephanie Robble. Robble? I'm not sure. Um, this is sold as a cultish book where we have sisters Natalie and Kit and then Kit decides to go to Wisewood which is this retreat type of place where you go for six months and don't have any technology no phone and you're not talking to anyone outside of Wisewood to make your life better so very cultish Natalie ends up getting a email from Wisewood someone at Wisewood is saying I know your secret, I'm gonna tell Kit. So Natalie go decides to go to Wisewood to find Kit, talk to Kit, and tell Kit the truth before someone else does and get Kit away from this place. I think just the advertising of this book and the synopsis of this book is just incorrect. <laughs> This was really disappointing for me, which sucks. I gave it only three stars. The reason I wanted to read this before the end of the year was because I thought this could be one of my favorite books of the year, and it just so wasn't. So it was pretty disappointing. There is a way in my head that I know that they could have sold this in a better way to make it a little less disappointing, but it would take one of the kind of um, reveals in this book away it would wouldn't be as surprising I guess one part of it but I don't know I think they could have done that it just didn't hit like I wanted it to hit but it wasn't bad it sold like there's this mystery of the secret and it just felt like a really small part of the book so this kind of hurt that I didn't this might hurt it kind of hurt because I didn't love it as much as I wanted to the final book that I read in November was My Sister the Serial Killer. I was so excited to get to this. This one follows two sisters, one who is a serial killer. She keeps saying that her boyfriend's doing something so she has to kill them in self-defense and her sister comes and cleans up the mess for her so she doesn't get caught. So the sister that cleans up the messes is a nurse. Ayola is the sister who is a serial killer and she starts seeing something, someone from Credit. I can't remember how to pronounce it. I listened to it on audio as well. I'm sorry, I can't remember how to pronounce the other sister's name, but um, from her work and that upsets her. So she's conflicted on how to get this man to not date Ayola because um, she doesn't want him to end up dead. This is sold as a mystery and I know that because it was on the Goodreads mystery thriller choice like the awards for that a couple years ago and it's just like not. <laughs> There's a tiny bit of a mystery element, tiny bit that you were just waiting to find out what happened to each of these men, like why the sister killed them. But you don't really find out. This, most people say this, and I totally agree, it's more of a family drama type of book, which is fine. It's just not what I was looking for. Also, this is supposed to have humor in it, but I did not, I did not laugh. I did not, like, there was nothing in this that I thought was funny. Don't know if I missed something, but from the reviews that I saw, lots of people agreed that there was, like, no funny parts to this. It was an interesting and fun, quick read. I liked it enough. I think I gave it like a 3.5. It was just not what I was looking for. I thought the concept of it was really interesting, but it just didn't hit 
the part that I wanted it to. Too much family drama, not enough murder mystery. But I still really liked it and I really, really liked the audiobook. So I would recommend listening to it because I thought it was a good audiobook. Those are all the books that I have read in the last three months. At least some of them were physical and I could show them to you. A couple hits, but a lot of mess, which wasn't too great, but oh well. You win some, you lose some. I'm very glad that I was able to read so many books off of my TBR in November. Seven physical books here. So I read nine books in November and I literally only started reading halfway through the month. Why can I not do that normally? You will see why I read so many books in the one vlog, but um, yeah, this was successful, a very successful month. I don't foresee this happening very often in the next couple months because I'm going to be pretty, pretty busy, but maybe in like springtime could get back into more reading. Like I'm still going to read a chunk, but like nine books a month, that's just not normal for me. <laughs> Sorry. Those are all the books that I've read in the last three months. Let me know down below if you've read any of these ever, what you thought of them, what your ratings were. If you're going to check any of these books out, I would love to hear. Let me know also in the comments down below what you've read recently. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and give it a big thumbs up. Both of those mean the absolute world to me. Make sure to turn on post notifications so you don't miss any of my book news uploads this month or any of my uploads in the future. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!